Well, the far reaches of Iran with its proxies are something that I want to show you today as we continue to watch what's happening and matching it to Scripture. We're matching it to what it is that the Bible says. And um, I want to do that in a little bit more detail today uh, is to let you know where we are. Uh, welcome here, all of you folks that, um, you know, you're interested in this end times um, study, and there's so very few people that do. We're, we're learning that, aren't we? Okay. <clears throat> um, let's, I, I'm, I'm just going to work kind of around uh, what I see happening in the Middle East as for you to get an understanding that when we're talking about Scripture, it says that when they confederate together, uh, Psalms 83, it says when they, they're grouping together and they're coming after Israel. This is becoming more apparent but if, if you look at this as like a, you know, taking each slice out of a pie and explaining it, there is one piece that's more important than the others. And I'm going to get to that here in just a minute, okay? All right, what I want to start with is, um, let's see, the Houthis. Do you folks understand the Houthis and what's going on there? Okay, they're a proxy of Iran's. Iran supports them greatly. So this is in Yemen is where this is taking place. And I want you to see this on a map. Okay, folks, here's Saudi Arabia. If you look right here, this is, this is Israel. Okay, here is Yemen right here. This is where the Houthis have taken over the government, and they actually control Yemen. Now, this is the same thing that happened in Lebanon, and that's by Hezbollah, and that's another proxy of Iran. Okay, so Yemen is a part, and the Houthis right here is what I want you to see, because... Let me move this up here a little bit. <clears throat> you see this little straight right here? Okay, this is controlled basically by Yemen or could be controlled by Yemen. This is where shipping comes in and out. It's a very important shipping lane. Here in the Red Sea is where America has planted some of its, its um, military boats, uh, ships. And every time the Houthis here fire missiles and they go all the way over and they're headed over here towards Israel, these ships here of America's shoots them down. They just shoot them out of the air. So they're, they're basically Houthi isn't being very effective right now, and that's why they're not really out in the news. But here's the point. Okay, um, Iran uh, <laughs> here, Houthis, proxies in Yemen, sworn that they have or will join into a fight to at this particular time eliminate Israel. Now if you go up here and you're not gonna be able to see it because it's very tiny but if you take the top here of Israel that's where Hezbollah is. Hezbollah again I know I'm repeating myself I just want to get this real clear. Again Iran's proxy and they haven't fully engaged yet. All right now so what's the other thing I want to explain about Yemen is is Iran wants to completely take over Yemen the same as as Hezbollah does in um, Lebanon so what's actually happening here Saudi Arabia doesn't want Iran in there but they would like to have control over this too so there's the conflict between Yemen and Saudi Arabia but yet the Houthis being the problems Israel would like to be in control of Lebanon, Lebanon would like to be control of their land, and they can't be, because Hezbollah is there. So, all right. So, what I'm trying to get you to see is this whole complete picture of where Israel is and where these proxies of Iran are in Psalms 83 when they confederate together. Now, what's actually taking place as of in the last couple of days is Hamas, which is in Israel within the Gaza Strip is also a proxy of Iran's. Now, we have the head, okay? It, it says that in Psalms 83, as they confederate together. Hamas is losing. This is the war within Gaza Strip. They're losing. And this is just now really coming to light that Israel is on the verge of controlling the Gaza Strip. That's the big, huge hubbub. That's everything that's going on right now. Uh, Iran is mad. Iran is threatening not only America 
in um, in the Red Sea right here, Iran is threatening a big explosion, and they're not giving any details on what that means, but they're really mad. They want these ships out of here. And the Houthis down here are swearing that they're going to do whatever they can, and they're starting to. They're interrupting the shipping going in and out of the Red Sea. All of this is being said because <clears throat> when they come together, when they fortify, that's going to be a moment that within Scripture we're told about. And again, Psalms 83 Iran, if they decide to get involved, would tell Hezbollah to start fighting all those, firing all those missiles that they have at Israel. Israel's a great concern, and so is, so is the Houthis in Yemen. They're a great concern. Now, if, if we just keep following this through, we have a moment in time to where Israel is being confronted with a situation that is told in Scripture in Psalms 83. Now, here's the catch. The catch is, is that whatever happens, we need to see something that says peace and safety if we want to include 1 Thessalonians 5, 1, 2, and 3, 4, and 5. Anyway, there's an understanding right there. And it says, when they say peace and safety, sudden destruction. Now, within that scripture, what is the sudden destruction? We don't know. Okay, I believe, and, and firmly believe this, it, it only makes sense, the sudden destruction is going to be when God steps in. Back to Psalm 83. Well, if you're getting this big picture now, you're seeing that Psalms 83 is unfolding before our eyes, but Thessalonians, the peace and safety is kind of evasive here at this particular point. So the talk is, is that, that those in the UN that just passed, or attempted to pass, uh, which was brought up by article, uh, what was it, 99, and that was is to pass a resolution that uh, all these nations would agree together to begin to sanction Israel, begin to stop Israel's commerce coming to and from. They have the power all these nations could start sanctioning against Israel. And that's what that was all about. But it was vetoed by the United States. Okay, moot. It's gone. It's finished. It, it's not going to happen. And, and let's remember that the UN does not have a police department and they don't have an army. They, they can't enforce anything. They can, if the article was passed, a resolution was made to sanction Israel, the ICC would step in, which is the International Criminal Court, that's of the UN. And then other nations would be given permission to maybe arrest some of the Israeli, you know, elites that are traveling. Uh, it could be like someone from the Knesset traveled over to the United States and then they went from there to another country. They, that country was part of that Article 99. They could arrest them and then it would have to go through criminal, criminal, uh, criminal court there and then they could be, you know, fining Israel. It goes on and on. It, but that didn't happen. So what they did was is they all got together and they voted again as if the article was still there. It's not. It's moot. However, all as that did really is it showed us that there's 152 nations that would be more than happy to see Israel stop the war, to create a ceasefire in hopes that continues to stop the war. That's what they were basically voting on. So I don't lend a lot of credence to that UN, you know, 152 vote and all that doesn't really mean a lot. All right, back to what we're trying to get to and the point here is, is when all of them come together, and then there's a time when they say peace and safety. Could that be when that UN passed that resolution? No, they didn't pass it. I'm sorry. My error. When they all voted on a moot resolution. <laughs> is that when they're saying that they had the peace and safety? I don't think so. And the reason for that is, is this, is, this war in Psalms 83 is centralized. It, it, it's talking about a time that is happening right now when they come against Israel, etc. That, that's what they're doing. They're coming against Israel. Israel has to go in and protect itself. All right, let's finish this up. 
So you have a situation to where Israel is winning a war. But even if the war is finished, and they're going to say peace and safety for a localized area, and that would be in the Gaza Strip. No. Okay, the, another thing that needs to be said here so you can follow through with this. Everyone is saying, what are we going to do when the war is finished and Israel wins? Who's going to be in control of the Gaza Strip? And, of course, that brings in the West Bank. West Bank, Palestinian Authority, the PLO, the Palestinian Liberation Organization, along with Fatah. Fatah, the PA was an offshoot from Fatah, a warring faction. We have uh, Hamas still in the West Bank. We have uh, the Islamic Jihadists still in the West Bank. Okay, and, and they're saying at the end, who's going to control this? Well, that's really simple. Yeah, that's not hard to figure at all if you follow through with Scripture. And what it says is, is a covenant will be confirmed by a person that Satan lends his authority and power to. There. Now you know Israel's going to be given that land when that covenant is made. Israel's going to win in Gaza. Now I'm, I'm shooting forward here, so this is my conjecture, but yet it's still with Scripture. So Israel's going to win the war. For that part, they will say peace and safety. They will figure, okay, Israel, this is showing... Hezbollah up north, this is showing West Bank that Israel's in control and Israel is willing to do that to West Bank, which they are in the process of and in the process of starting a war with Hezbollah. Okay, here is the, the big point that I'm trying to, to, to get to you to see here <clears throat> because this is, again, it, it fits, it, it plays into scripture. And that is, you have Iran and its proxies, as they gather together with one head, threatening Israel. You have Hezbollah up north threatening Israel. And then you have, within Israel, you have the West Bank threatening Israel. But Israel's only really in one war right now with a mission. And that happens to be this little tiny spot. You have to see it way down here. That's the Gaza Strip. So we're going to just put all this together now and understand Iran, as we speak, and Hamas are seeing that their authority and power is about ready to be removed. Hamas's authority and power is about ready to be removed. And how can you tell? Because Hamas is saying, okay, we, I think we need a, we need a ceasefire. We, we need to stop here. We, we, we might want to, you know, start working with you. And this is through Qatar and through Egypt that they're trying to broker some sort of a ceasefire deal again. Well, what that means is, is they're losing and they know it and they need to regroup. That's exactly what it means. How else do we know that? It's because Iran right now feels that they're one of their strengths proxies within Israel's about ready to be eliminated. And they are going out of their way to threaten, and here's their words, with an explosion. We don't know what that means because they don't go into any detail. And it also says that they're saying that they will then become more involved, which would mean what? What sort of the proxy? Hezbollah. Now, if I'm figuring all this, folks, <clears throat> they know what's going on. So... Another great point that, that I just want you to see here is, is, is this is unfolding and coming together. It's building into a time that's going to come to a head. And that's funny because that happens to be the wording which is in Psalms 83. They confederate together as one head. But, but the problem from my standpoint of view now is when they say peace and safety because it's hard for me to visualize at that moment they say peace and safety. That's what Paul said. He says, then that sudden destruction. You see, we can eliminate all the surrounding news. We can get rid of everything out there and just stay concentrated, and that's what I do, on this one particular subject. And that is the Psalms 83. And let's remember, what God does is not with an army. What God does and will be 
obviously, by a divine intervention. And when he does, when it's finished, this is going to be chaos on this world. And that's when the beast, first beast, Revelation 13, he exhibits the power given to him by Satan. If Satan gives him his power, where is Satan? That's that spiritual war in Revelation 12. Satan and his angels go up into heaven to attempt to stop what? <laughs> the child being born. That's the war that is known in Revelation 12 in heaven. Because Michael and his angels are going to keep, prevent Satan from stopping the rapture, but at the same time, he's going to keep and prevent Satan and his going back down to the earth. And that's exactly why Satan gave his power and authority to somebody else. He says, whatever you do, well, I'm gone. Of course, I, that's not in scripture. Whatever you do, well, I am gone. You agree to whatever it is that Israel wants. And I know, Satan is saying, I'm going to be back in three and a half years, and that'll be mid that seven years that Daniel talked about. We call it the tribulation. He says, I'm going to be back in mid, and when I do, I'm going to join you, and then we're going to go from there. So you, you, you've you got it now, if, if this made sense to you, that the sudden destruction, when it happens, Satan and his angels his deceiving force and him being the great deceiver is going to be taken off this earth. And this son of perdition, as I call him, this antichrist, as a lot of people call him, this first beast in Revelation 13, he is going to be in control of that UN that you're talking about. That, my speculation, but where else would he go? He's going to go into the UN and he's going to say, I am the authority, I am the power. What you just have seen, this is the first, I'm, I'm putting words in the mouth of the, of the son of perdition. I don't know what he's going to say. But it's going to be like this because I can tell what the outcome is going to be. He's going to say in the UN, you 152 nations, sit down and shut up. I'm the one in authority now. What the Jews God just did was wiped out all the surrounding enemies, and that's going to be the Houthis, that's going to be Hezbollah, that's going to set Iran way back, that's going to be those in the West Bank, and that's going to be those in parts of Syria, the lower part of Syria, and that's where Damascus is. You understand, this is the land that's going to be gained. Here's, here's, here's Damascus right here. So if you want to put a circle around here, Jordan will be included. Parts of Egypt here will be included. And you're going to come up here and again back around here. To, this is going to be where Israel's enemies are eliminated, taking away the power from Iran. And at that particular point, <clears throat> he's going to say, and he will have the authority because folks... <laughs> I don't know how else to say this to get it across. I just have a limited vocabulary. But, but this is going to be a earth-changing moment because what's going to happen is America is not going to be really important anymore at that point. I'm not saying they won't be involved in anything. They're just not going to be important. There's no reason to because it's been won. It's finished. A lot of disappointment from a lot of people thinking, oh, we're going to build a two-state. Oh, we're going to do all this stuff. No, no, they're not. Because it's made very clear for us that are studying end times and we're trying to figure this stuff out, what's going to happen. So some of this is my conjecture in there, but, but we cannot take away from where it is that we have been, guide, have been guided to. And that's Paul when he says, folks, when they say peace and safety, Okay, then a sudden destruction. That's God in Psalm 83 stepping in. This is going to be huge. And that very destruction 
that is told about by Paul is going to be explosive. And I don't mean military power bomb explosive. I mean an event, world event. It's going to be explosive throughout the world. And it's going to be the revealing of spiritual powers. Not only Satan giving the power to the son of perdition, but it's going to be also people are going to be beyond wowed how it was that the war was won. Israel got its territory freed up of enemies by their God. And that Psalms 83, 17 and 18, that the world will know that it is the Jews God that did it. Okay, you have it. Let's try to keep this in mind. Uh, no more asking when. We know what we're watching for. Uh, everyone is trying to stop Israel with a ceasefire, which only makes sense. We have the deceiving power of Satan that walks this earth, principality power, that's not seen by us, folks. We don't fight against flesh and blood. That's Ephesians 6.12. We fight against principalities of powers that are out there. The principality of power is going to be removed. But there will be a power that is given to a man. And that's the son of perdition. And he is the one that's going to go into the UN and tell those 152 nations to sit down and shut up. Because you're going to listen to me. And he's going to say to America, you're not needed. You stay out of this. And as it says, who is it, Revelation 13, that can war against him? That question alone just tells you no one can because he's folks this is demonic but this is spiritual powers are going to be revealed to this earth and this is going to be a time when people are going to go what in the world happened because we have a bunch of people missing there's your rapture harpazo they're going to be seeing them i would believe they would i don't know how many are going to go if it'll be a big thing or not but the big thing will be that sudden destruction but just prior to that, someplace, somehow, somewhere, they or them are going to be saying peace and safety. And I have focused in on that being at a time Israel thinks that they have defeated Hamas in the Gaza Strip. That's when those in Israel, that's the they and those. Now remember, <laughs> this is another good, strong, solid point. This is about God, his family, the Jews, and Israel. This isn't about the UN and New York over here. This isn't about what Iran is doing. That stuff's later on. This isn't about a friendship between Israel and Saudi Arabia or the friendship between Israel and America. It's not about that anymore. This is about the Jews God doing it for a specific reason. And as I've explained that before, if you want that reason, it's real simple. How can the Orthodox Jews be forgiven when they won't believe their Messiah is Jesus? How? It's real simple. They're going to build a temple and start sacrificing. As it was told and understood by us that they must do. Then guess what? God forgives them. And now God is willing to work with Israel again. It's <laughs> been a long time. Remember God kept his face from those that did not believe Jesus as he rode into Jerusalem on a donkey that he was their Messiah. They didn't believe it. And God says, I shall hide my face from you. When does he return, open up, and let his face be seen? When will he again be able to communicate with his family? When does that happen? When they sacrifice. So I'm just hoping that this to you gives you enough understanding that your patience can be there just to allow this to happen when it does without any preconditions you know wanting it to happen at a certain time the sooner the better of course I agree with that 
us that believe Jesus, you folks that believe Jesus as your Savior, you're done. You're finished. You're still going to go through your fleshly, earthly life no matter what. Same as me as anybody else. That's a little bit different for the Orthodox Jews. They're the ones that when God says, Church, come home, He's going to go ahead and deliver Israel from their surrounding enemies that they can build a temple and there will be a power on this earth that will be so strong that America won't even confront it. Russia won't confront it. No one will. Because he is the one that's going to, as a covenant is made for seven years. And the Antichrist is there to confirm it. It doesn't get voted on, folks. It gets put into paper. It gets put into an article, or not an article, into a resolution. And he says, I'm here to enforce that. And that's what Israel gets. Because I said so. And I have the authority and power of Lucifer one of God's fallen angels, and that's going to be tremendous, whatever he has. Okay, round and round and round I went, and I'm, I'm sorry if I'm a little long-winded, but uh, of all this doubt and trying to figure out what's going on in the world and all these different things that are happening with inside Gaza Strip and that America is doing and how America's government is falling and what's going on with, with uh, Turkey, and we want to know how Egypt is involved, and we want to try to figure out how it is that Qatar is actually working and giving money to the Palestinians. All that's just right at this particular point. Not of great interest if we understand when... God's going to enter in and when he's going to do his spiritual power, which is the greatest of all, and it's going to start a path at settling this. And it starts with the church being removed, a sudden destruction. But just prior to the church being removed, I should have said it started with this. Some place, somewhere, somehow, someone will be saying peace and safety. Now the rapture can happen before then, at that time, or just shortly after. I don't know. It doesn't say. When Paul said, when, we, when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction, let's figure it this way. The church, when that sudden destruction hits, won't be here. When the church goes, I don't know. So, patience, my friends, please, I hear people just so upset, and it, it, it bothers me. And uh, why? <laughs> look what we're being offered. You know, what, look, look what's going to happen. And we're there. We're there at that time. And folks, this is a tremendous time, a, a huge time. And don't even think for a moment that this whole thing of Psalms 83, of God doing what he's going to do, is going to be minor. This is going to be known the whole world, and it's going to be huge what he's going to be doing. And it's going to set a lot of people straight at really understanding who is in charge when it comes to Israel. And it's certainly not going to be the Knesset. It's going to be God himself. And he'll set it up for that to happen. Folks, hopefully this was helpful. Until Sunday, I'm going to be back here and we'll go from there. Does that sound good? All right. Thanks again for stopping in. Um, we'll just go from there.